Good afternoon, students. Again, this is Secondary Math 1 and Secondary Math 1 Honors. And this is Mr. Thorson, if you didn't recognize my voice. We, today, we're going to be talking about transversals. So what you're looking at here so far is a, a, a diagram of three lines. And I'm going to use this little thing here and this little thing here to put, as pointers to point to specific things, angles specifically, that I'm going to be talking about. But before we get into that, let's talk first about what we mean by a transversal. So I'm going to highlight transversals. A transversal is a line that cuts across at least two other lines. So for instance, we have line AB. So we have this top line here, AB. We have the bottom line here, CD. And we have a line that cuts across them, line EF. And it hits those two lines at points Q and R. So line EF is considered our transversal. This line here is our transversal because it cuts across the other two lines. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what we mean by interior angles. So I'm moving on to interior angles. Interior angles, I like to think of it as this. Let's think of these two lines that basically look parallel as railroad tracks. We can be on the inside of the railroad tracks or we can be on the outside of the railroad tracks. So I'm going to use these now as my pointers. My interior angles would be this angle here, which you, I would consider to be called CRQ, or this interior angle. And there's this angle on the other side, which is DRQ. And then there's the two interior angles at the top of the track, or here at AQR and BQR. So we have four interior angles, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle. Now, our exterior angles should obviously be pretty obvious of what they mean. Our exterior angles are on the outside of the track, like if you are not going to get ran over by the train. So this would be an exterior angle. This would be an exterior angle. Up here would be an exterior angle. And over here would be an exterior angle. So we have four exterior angles. So again, the first thing I want to make sure we realize is we have a single transversal that cuts across two lines, and we have four interior angles and four exterior angles. Now let's talk about how we kind of pair up those angles. So all these things on the right-hand side here, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, same side interior and same side exterior, come in pairs. Okay, so let's start with the corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, but how I like to look at that is I like to think of we have two intersections. We have this intersection at Q and we have an intersection at R. At Q, we have these four angles. We have the two on top, the two on bottom. Let's look at the top one on the right, this angle EQB. It has an angle that is in the same position in the bottom intersection. So on this bottom intersection at R, we have two top angles, two bottom angles. And we have a top right angle, which is that QRD angle. And that corresponds to the top right angle in the top intersection point, the EQB. So this angle here and this angle here would be considered corresponding angles. But that's not the only pair of corresponding angles in this figure. We can also take the top left angles. So this angle on this side here and this angle here would be called corresponding angles because they're in the same position, top left of this intersection point, top left of this intersection point. They're corresponding angles. We also have angles underneath that are called corresponding angles. We have the bottom left and the bottom left, and we have the bottom right and the bottom right. So those two angles are called corresponding angles. They're in the same position with respect to the intersections. Now let's talk about alternate interior angles. And that's the one you'll actually refer to the most when we get to uh, other levels of mathematics or other concepts. Alternate interior means obviously we're going to be on the inside of our railroad track. So it's going to relate to these four angles on the inside. But when we talk about alternate, we're on alternate sides of our transversal. So we have these two angles here would be considered alternate interior angles. This pair B, Q, R, and C, R, Q would be uh, alternate interior angles. But we have one other pair of alternate interior angles. Whoa, that was really weird. That's this angle here, and that's this angle here. Those two are alternate 
interior angles. So we have two pair of alternate interior angles. Hopefully, now that we move on to alternate exterior angles, it should be pretty obvious. Alternate exterior on the outside of the railroad track. Okay, and again, they're on alternate, si alternate sides of the transversal. So this angle here, the AQE, would be alternate exterior angle to DRF because they're on alternate sides of the transversal. Likewise, we can go on this pair of alternate exterior angles on the outside of the trans or railroad tracks and on alternate sides of the transversal. Hopefully the bottom one, same side interior angles, should be fairly obvious. That means we want to be on the same side of the transversal and on the interior angles. So these two are considered alternate interior angles. Over here, these two would be considered alternate interior angles. Obviously, we should hopefully kind of know exactly what we mean by alternate our same side exterior angles now, same side exterior angles would be these two angles. And one other pair would be this pair over here. So hopefully this concept of a transversal and these pairs of angles that we associate amongst them makes sense. Um, I'm going to sign one IXL with this lesson. And if you have any questions, please contact me via Zoom or email.